Hi, I'm Kelly. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this pendant. Written in the description below is a list of everything you'll need, along with links to my Facebook page and my Etsy page where I've got all my PDF tutorials if anybody's interested in those. This one is quite a simple idea pendant to do really. And as long as your stone has a hole through the middle, then it will work. So it could even work with a crescent moon shape. Quite a quick one to do this week. And don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching. To make this pendant you'll need 0.8mm wire, that's 20 gauge, and I've cut two lengths at 12 inches each, that's 30 centimetres, and one length at 8 inches, that's 20 centimetres. You need 0.315mm weaving wire, which is 28 gauge, and you'll need about 300 centimetres. You'll need a donut cab, or whatever they're called, for this design mine's four centimeters all the way around it could be any size really and the hole could be in the middle or towards the top so any sort of donut should work for this or you could use um, a crescent moon shape if you have one of those handy that the design will work the same on both we need a little five millimeter cab Mine's flat backed. Tools will need um, your favourite pliers, round nose pliers and wire cutters. And I think that's it. Let's get started. We always estimate the amount of weaving wire that we're going to use for a tutorial because I don't actually measure it out. But what I do is wind mine onto a bobbin. So I find it's a lot easier to work with it that way. The weight of the bobbin always helps with the, the weave. These are called bobbies. Got this one off eBay. So yeah, so I've wound all mine onto a bobbin. You can cut short lengths as you go if you prefer. So we're going to start weaving right in the middle of the wire. So find your middle point. It should be about six inches from the start. I'm going to start by wrapping three times around that bottom wire. So what we're going to do, I know I even haven't really started yet, but we're going to pull those wires apart just a little bit. We're going to do a figure of eight type weave over the two wires. So I've gone up the back and over the top of the other wire. Is that in focus? And then I'm going to go around that wire three times. And then that wire has come over the top, so I'm going to go underneath the bottom wire. I'm going to wrap around that three times. Then up the back over the top wire. Wrap around that three times. And then under the bottom wire three times. So we're going to do this as long as the distance between the hole and the edge of the bead. Bead stone. So your weave needs to be as long as this distance here so we can pop the wires through the middle and this bale type weave will reach to the edge of the stone. 
So I keep doing that figure of eight type weave. So that's my weave. And it's the same length as my stone. Always keep pushing your weave together as you weave in. Like that. I'm going to just cut that tail off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to post those wires through the stone. So my woven part sits just over my stone. I'm going to bend them straight up the back. Like that. So I've just added a few more repeats so that we weave came to the top of my stone. What I'm going to do now is open these back two wires. So that they sit next to the top wires. I'm going to bend them over the stone slightly. And this one. Oops. So I've now got four wires all sat next to each other. So I'm going to continue this weave now over the four wires. So I'm going to go around the two wires and then twice around my original wire and I'm going to go to the other side straight around the two wires do that twice then I go just around that middle single wire twice. And then I'll come back under these two wires, go around those twice, and then around that single wire so you can see the repeat. We'll do that, keep repeating that and make sure your wires don't come in, they still need to be on a nice angle going out. So we need to re repeat that. So I've done about a centimetre and a half, one and a half centimetres. Take my wires, bending both of them at the same time, 
I'm going to do the same on the other side. Make sure your weave is pulled down. So I'm aiming for a nice shape on the top there. And we're not actually going to weave to the point. We're going to weave to about here. So we need to guess where this point is going to be. And then bend your wire back a little bit. Hopefully where that point will be. Like that. Then we're going to carry on weaving up this shape, this new shape. So I'm going to go under both wires twice and this, this is going to want to keep sliding along the wire so you've got to hold it down and then twice around that with the wire so we're just going to carry on as we were only this time we've just got to be careful to hold it in place. We're going to continue that a bit further. And as you're weaving this top part, it's quite fiddly and the temptation to squeeze and pull the wires is quite tricky. So just make sure you don't push these two parts together because you're going to crimple all your wires. You have to resist the temptation to pull those main wires together. So try and keep that shape as you weave in. So I've wrote, woven right the way to the top there, but don't keep going till your wires meet, you need a gap at the top here, so they need to be apart a little bit. That's what I've got so far. And now we're going to curve our bail. If you have bail pliers, that would be ideal. I'm going to use this old pencil. I'm going to put it right where the bend is on the wires and gently bend the weave completely over the piece like that. my pliers where these wires come down at the back here I'm just going to bend them up a little bit so that we can pull that right down flush to the stone like that So a little bio. So I'm going to take the wires of the weave here that went round to the back and I'm going to pull them around to the front and the other side. Bit. I'm going to take my weaving wire and I'm going to go around the whole piece all the way around about five times and 
where I'm holding, hard to hold it and show you. If I hold it upside down, that's better. Just so we're strapping it all together. And then I'll go around one of these wires just to secure it in place. So that's what we've got so far. Needs a bit of straightening out. I've been keeping the pencil in place so I don't misshape that bale as I pull the wires around or pull the weaving wire around. Because until it's firmly fixed in place, it may get tweaked a little bit. I'm going to cut that weaving wire. So now we're going to wrap our tiny cab. So take the shorter length of wire, holding it in the middle. Hold your cab face down. Now this is really quite fiddly and it takes some time, practice, to get your head around it. But if you can wrap the cab this way, it's really useful. You can add it to almost any jewellery at all. So it's worth persisting with. This is really fiddly, but it's worth persisting with. So I'm wrapping my wire around my cab. And then hold on to your cab really tight. Wrap the wire around the cab. Get it nice and tight and keep going around. That's the front. As I said, this is really fiddly, so please persist with it because it is worth it. I'm going to carry on wrapping, winding around this stone. I'm going around the back now. Still got it face down on my finger. I'll keep going around. And then when you get to a point like this, I've already got two wraps. This is my third one. Start coming over the back of the stone. I'm still going around. So I'm kind of encasing the back of the stone. And there it is. Trapped in a little coil of wire. And this is really fiddly and hard to get it the first time and you think, well, maybe it's going to pull undone or something if I just add it the way it is. So I made a little tester sample and I've been wearing this on my bracelet for about a week now. And it hasn't come undone and it hasn't snagged on anything. So I think we can trust this little curl of wire, that square wire. That's on a cubic zirconia. We can trust that it's going to stay put. So take your time and see if you can wrap your little cab. And if you can finish with the wire coming out of each side, that would be ideal. So I'm just going to bend this wire out and this wire out and I'm happy that that's going to stay in there and I'm going to add that 
to the bale there on the piece. It is worth getting your head around this because you could add a loop at the top and you could hang it to an earring. You could chop off your single wire, which is what I did to this one. Cut the wire off the front, put the back as a loop and kind of attach it to things. So I'm going to try and do this, keeping the pencil in place so I don't misshape or bail too much. And I'm going to put my stone on top of the weaves that we did to hold everything together there, a little bundle of weaves. And holding it where I want it, I'm going to take this top wire, bend it straight around the back. And then this, the other wire, which comes out the back of the stone, I'm going to send around the other way. And I'm going to bring it around underneath those two wires. And... Where's my other one gone? There it is. Pull that around underneath those two wires. Like that. So I think I'm not going to bring them around the front. I think it's better off to finish them at the back there. So I'm actually taking them back to the back. Sorry about this, I've changed my mind. <laughs> so my two wires off my stone taken to the back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them and then just fold it around the back of the bale and that will hold it in place. Just going to bend it around my line nose wires. Probably take this pencil out now, that'd make it easier. Squeeze it in place on the other side. I can tell I always use the same pencil for this, it's hardly got any paint left on it. Bend that around. Oops a daisy. And squeeze that in place. So that's the stone secured in place. So now I'm going to take these two wires. Keep them nicely next to each other and don't let them cross over each other. Take them around to the top there. I'm going to curve them, which one? Curve it around. I'm going to put the pencil back in because I'm going to misshape the veil. And this one this way. And 
I'm going to have to attach a bit of weaving wire on there to secure it down. Just taking a short length of weaving wire. I'm going to wrap three times around one of the wires just to attach my weaving wire. I'm going to go around both wires. Three times. Slide that down a bit. Just like that. Now I'm going to go through I'm going to bend it a bit more first I'm going to go around this top wire three times so I've secured my two wires together I'm going to trim that weaving wire Do whatever you wanted with these wires. I'm going to cut them and curl them. So I'm taking my round nose pliers just to curl my curl my wires there. I'm gonna put the pencil back in. I've ruined a lot of bales. Best to be careful. I'm going to trim that weaving wire off there. And I'm going to reattach it further up. Bits of wood off the pencil <laughs> everywhere. I'm going to reattach my wire to this little curl at the top. Flipped around a couple of times. I'm going to go through the bale Catch it, where is it? I'm just going to wrap around the edge wires Bale. A few 
few times. Just to stop that curl catching on anything. Probably best to do it to the other curl as well. Just tie it down to that edge of the bail down there. Now for these two wires, really you can experiment and do whatever you want with these wires, curl them in whichever way you want. I'm going to add just a little bit of weaving wire to hold them together. I'm going to attach my wire to the bottom of the two. And just wrap around both of the wires a few times. Then that bottom wire again three times. Just to hold them together. Chop that tail off. I'm going to take the top wire straight around to the back and this other wire I'm going to add a few more coils and I'm just going to do a small curl at the bottom. So I need to finish off this top wire. I'm going to cut it short. And I'm going to try and post it through there, make a little hole first. Oh lovely, like that. Doesn't normally go in first time like that for me. Pinch it flat, keeps it in place. And then this one, I've left my Weaving more there because I'm going to attach that around there to secure it in place. I'm just going to cut that off and bob in. With this little bit of wire, and go straight behind the weave. Something's catching me there. And a short bit. No matter how much you trim these ends off, they always seem to come back through. Right, where was I? Yes, pull that so it brings it right down flat. And I'll go under the wire. And over. So we just went completely around the weave, over the weave on this side, posted it underneath this wire, and I'm doing a few more coils to hold it all in place. Cut 
that weaving wire. Try and get it short this time. And I'm going to trim that one right there. Curl that one around. Like that. And I'm done. Curl that little wire around again to hold it firmly in place. Hope you managed to follow this tutorial and find it useful. And I hope you do get on with fitting these little stones because I do love seeing little stones added to pieces and it's so hard sometimes to get them to stay in there and you know that one isn't going to go anywhere so good luck with that I do really think you should persist with getting your head around that and it is fiddly and it took me a few days to be able to trap it in there properly show you the other ones I've been making can add a little loop on there and then you can attach it to your jewellery. This one I brought the back wire up as the loop and wrap the front wire around that back wire. And you can do it with cubic zirconias as well. And that's a little tiny topaz. But you can attach these to earrings. Quite fiddly, but once you've got your head around them, very useful. So you could add it straight to your your latest pendant that you've made whatever you want to do really it's up to you just thought I'd share that with you quite an exciting discovery and I hope you found this tutorial useful and don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video so this is my piece oxidised And I've finished the little crescent in silver. I did it in sterling. And I found, because I've never wrapped a crescent before, with this design, you got a lot of this going on, and the crescent just kept popping out the bottom. So I've secured it with these little wraps. So if you want to do a crescent, do the pattern as we did anyway, normally, bring the wires to the front, and then bring the wires down out to the sides and then I've just brought them back around to the front I did these little curls and then I've just curled the ends and attached them on with weaving wire on both sides so it's all secure and that stone won't move around anymore now I just wanted to share that with you. Looks quite nice in silver. And I put a little garnet in there. That was really fiddly to get the smaller stone. It's much easier to do a bigger stone like that. So have fun, happy making, 
and do come and share all your finished work on my Facebook page I do love seeing all your finished work and don't forget to mention me when you're sharing your finished work made for my tutorials online see you in the next video